Good morning, fabulous fourth grade. Today is April the 21st, 2020. We are going to continue with our online learning in our virtual classroom. First, I'm going to share the screen. Okay, again, good morning, fabulous fourth grade. All right, so it is April the 21st. It is a terrific Tuesday. Um, today, we're going to continue learning about biodiversity. Our learning goal, repeat after me, I can identify the components of an ecosystem and identify and explain each level of an energy pyramid. Let's do it again. I can identify the components of an ecosystem and identify and explain each level of an energy pyramid. So what is biodiversity? Biodiversity, it is a variety of life in the world or in a particular habitat or ecosystem. An ecosystem is all of the living and non-living parts of an environment. An environment is all of the living and non-living things around an organism and more than one of the same type of organism is a population. So here's an example. So we have deer and more than one, this one deer is an organism, this one deer is an organism, and these deers are organisms. So more than one type of the same type of organism is a population. So when you have one human, that human is an organism. But when you have more than one human, you have a population of organisms or humans. A community would be um, two different groups of populations. So like I have a population of deer and then I have a population of bobcats. And so because I have two separate populations, I have a community. Now an ecosystem would be multiple populations of different organisms in the same habitat or the same area, same ecosystem. And then it would also be the non-living components of that particular habitat area or ecosystem. So non-living components would be like the water. It would be like the soil. It would be like the climate. It would be like the sunlight, um, any, the, the rocks. Anything that is non-living in that area um, could be considered part of that ecosystem as well as the living organisms in that area. Living organisms are not just limited to um, animals and humans. Living organisms are also plants. So the grass that's growing outside would be a living organism. Um, all of the grass would be a population of living organisms. The trees outside, there are different variety of plants and trees. And so all of those would be, all the maple trees that you have, um, would be part of a population. All of the oak trees that you have would be part of an, a, a population. The coniferous or the pine cone trees are all part of a population. So all of these uh, make up uh, ecosystem and biodiversity uh, takes place when you have all of these interacting with each other and being um, interconnected and dependent upon each other for survival. All right, so last week we learned that plants make their own energy source uh, which is glucose, and they make it through the process of photosynthesis. What about animals? How do animals get energy? So that is going to be our investigation question for the remainder of the week. How do animals get energy? Animals get energy, um, there's our investigation questions, animals get energy um, from their environment. And so plants cannot get energy um, from their environment, but they do, however, um, get energy from the sun. All right, so I'm going to pull out of this just so I can edit this and you guys can um, follow along. So plants get their energy from the sun and they are at the bottom of the energy pyramid. Uh, we classify them in the group of producers because they produce their own energy. Um, they cannot leave their spot and go get energy unless someone uproots them and takes them, which they'll be pulled away from their energy source. All right, so the, the organism that um, eats the plants is a primary consumer. And so um, the primary consumer would be um, 
right above the plants because they eat the plants. Now, in this case, the primary summer could be and would be an herbivore. Um, we'll talk more about the herbivores later, but typically it's an herbivore. Mm, spelled that wrong. It's herbivore. There we go. All right. And the secondary consumer would be the, the, the consumer or the organism that consumes uh, the primary consumer. And so energy is being transferred from the producer to the primary consumer. Once the secondary consumer consumes the primary consumer, then the energy from that organism will be transferred to uh, the secondary consumer. It's not the exact same amount of energy. Um, however, I'll make it back there. Um, it's, it's not the same amount of energy because as energy transfers, less and less of the energy transfers to the next organism. And we'll do an investigation tomorrow to, um, to back that up. And then the, the final organism that receives energy through this um, energy pyramid is a tertiary consumer. Now, the tertiary consumer um, would be, let's go back. This one would be either an omnivore or it would be a carnivore. There we go. And I didn't spell that one right. There we go. Got it. All right. So it would be a um, a carnivore or it would be a omnivore, an omnivore. And the reason being um, the carnivore would eat the herbivore because it eats only meat. But the omnivore would eat the herbivore or it would eat the producers. As a matter of fact, We're going to make that small. Okay, I can see it now. There we go. All right, and so here um, you would have an omnivore or you would have a carnivore. And then the tertiary consumer, so the tertiary consumer could be either or. It could be the, um, it could be a, another carnivore or it could be a scavenger or it may not even be a consumer, it could be a decomposer. So say Miss Davis, um, I had a, a beautiful plant outside. Just, I'm planting some corn and uh, um, that would be my producer. And the producers, oh, let's talk about where they get their energy source from. The producers get their energy source from, you guessed it, the sun. So their energy source would be the sunlight energy. All right, so um, my, my corn plants would be planted outside and all of a sudden a primary consumer an herbivore a mouse would come and start eating from my plants well then um, a secondary consumer smelled the mouse and was like "Ooh, afternoon snack and so it was a snake and it decided that it wanted to consume the snake well then miss davis was driving down the highway on her way to promise academy and the snake was in the middle of the road and um, the snake was ran over eight times by Miss Davis. She moved forward and like, oh, I ran something over. She bagged up and then she moved forward again. Wait, I ran something over, I still feel it. And then she bagged up and I still feel it. And so she bagged up again. 
And after eight times, the snake was no more. And so then Miss Davis got back on the highway and she started driving and she went to the car wash to wash off what she thought was, you know, something bad on her tires. And then she left and went to Promise Academy and she just peached and poured into her scholars. Well, then that lovely little snake that got ran over eight times by Miss Davis is left on the side of the road, remnants of it. But then a scavenger came along and they were like, ooh, lunch. And so they um, picked off of the remains or the remnants of the snake. And then after a few days, all of a sudden, um, worms, maggots and earthworms started breaking down the remains of the snake, decomposing it. And then what was left on the road got washed over to the grass and it started raining and the nutrients or the energy that was still left in the snake that did not get consumed by the other decomposers um, went into the soil through the roots of the plants. And those nutrients, those remaining nutrients were absorbed through the soil, through the roots uh, to the plants. And then whatever animal or whatever through the plants and whatever primary consumer eats those plants get those nutrients all over again. So this is that interdependence and that biodiversity in the energy uh, pyramid. So again, this is, this is our essential question. How do animals get energy? And we're going to continue investigating how animals get energy in Google Classroom. So once you get into Google Classroom, um, we'll go into Michigan State first and you'll look under the classwork tab. From the classwork tab, you will look for our topic biodiversity and you will look for today's date. All right, same thing in Chicago State. Go to classwork tab, look for our topic biodiversity, look for today's date. Same thing in ND, go to Notre Dame classwork tab, biodiversity and today's date. So today we're going to work out of Michigan, all right, so I'm going to go to the classwork tab, biodiversity, look for today's date, click on today's date, view assignment. Once I view the assignment, I'm on the instructions tab, and it tells me everything that I need to do. The first thing, always, fab vocab. So let's go to our fab vocab. From our fab vocab, we are going to do ecosystems one. Remember next week will be ecosystems two, all right? So let's go back to the beginning because you know Ms. Davis loves going over these fab vocab. Uh, Jalen Athena beat my highest score, so Ms. Davis has got to bring it. I got to get back up there, all right? So our first term is ecosystem. My turn, your turn, ecosystem, all right? So an ecosystem is the living and non-living parts of the environment in a specific area. Ecosystems can be really small, or really large, okay? The next term, my turn, your turn, environment, environment. An environment is everything, all the living and non-living things that surround just an organism. My turn, your turn, producer, producer. So a producer is an organism that makes its own food through photosynthesis. An example of producers, plants. All of the plants make their own food. And then what is photosynthesis? It's a process used by plants and other autotrophs to capture light and energy from the sun and to use it to power chemical reactions that convert carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and energy-rich carbohydrates, glucose, such as sugar and starches. My turn, consumer, your turn, consumer. It's an organism that must eat or consume plants or animals for food. An herbivore, my turn, herbivore, your turn, herbivore. An herbivore is an organism that only eats plants. All right, so that mouse that Ms. Davis was talking about is an herbivore. It only eats plants. So a lot of people say that mice eat cheese, mice eat, mice eat cheese because you leave the cheese out. But if you put peanut butter out, Mice love peanut butter because it is a plant. 
omnivores. An omnivore is an organism that eats both plants and animals. Carnivores. A carnivore is an organism that only eats meat, which is other animals. You are an omnivore. Um, some people say that they are vegetarian because they don't eat meat. However, um, biology, biology wise, you're an omnivore. Your body is designed to get nutrients from plants and nutrients from other organisms that are meat. Our next term, decomposer. So a decomposer breaks down dead plants and animals. This, this returns the nutrients to the soil. So Ms. Davis was talking about that snake that she ran over eight times. Once that animal is broken completely down, either by the scavengers or the decomposers, those nutrients again will return to the soil and be reabsorbed through the roots of the plants. Habitat. Habitat is an environment that provides the things a specific organism needs to live, grow, and reproduce. Remember in class, we talked about how animals must have a place where they can sleep and stay safe and have their young. And so this would be considered their habitat. They need to live, they need to grow, and they need to reproduce or have young, new babies. And then a food chain. A food chain is a community of organisms where each member is eaten in turn by another member. That goes back to that energy pyramid um, that we just created. In the energy pyramid, um, all of the animals would be put in a circle with a food chain or linked with the food chain. And it just shows how energy flows through um, this link. And then the final one is a food web, a food web. So it's a community of organisms where there are several interrelated food chains. A food web is exactly what it says. You have your producers at the bottom, just like in a energy pyramid. Your, your primary consumers would be the organisms that eat the producers, either a omnivore or an herbivore. Your secondary consumers would be either an omnivore or a carnivore. Your tertiary consumers would be a carnivore or it could be a scavenger and then finally a decomposer. All right, so after you go over your fab vocab at least two times, then Ms. Davis wants you to play the match game. So remember, we just want to make all of our terms match up with the definition. Things, oh, that's a habitat. Mm -hmm. An organism that eats only plants, that's a herbivore. An organism that makes their own food, that's a producer. It's not there. A community of organisms where there's, oh, that's food web. A plant, that's photosynthesis. An organism, oh, there's producer and omnivores. All right, so 24 point. Somebody's knocked me down to the third place. Good job, scholars. That lets me know that you guys are learning and rocking it out. All right, so I want you to keep practicing the game. Ms. Davis is going to get back on here later on and give someone a run for their, for their knowledge. Let's keep rolling. All right, so after we do our fab vocabularies two times, two times, how many times? Two times. Then Ms. Davis wants you to at least two times. And I want you to go back into Google Classroom. From Google Classroom, we have a video that we need to watch. That's the second one. Let's watch the YouTube video. And you know, my videos are not going to be really, really long. So um, the longest one I think I've had has been eight minutes. That was long. But this one is about two minutes, Everything and it just tells you exactly what you need to know. Energy from the sun is transferred to the plant. And then insects can be transferred from the plant. And then the snake can be transferred. Or get ran over eight energy times. Pyramid. There it is. To make your own.
He's walking on water. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So after you finish watching the video, and you can watch it twice if you want to, then Ms. Davis has a Energy Pyramid doc. And this time you'll actually be able to go in and edit the doc and you'll answer the questions. In addition to that, we also have a read work um, passage that I want you to actually read. And then after you read, I want you to um, answer the questions. And it's just an Energy Pyramid and a, a small passage and you just go in answer the questions make sure you answer all of them including the type in questions and then press the submit button and it's just the eco pyramid and it's just basically what we already just did and then from there i want you to log in to legends of learning and remember i've already signed you up so you do not have to sign up again all you have to do is log in as a student so here it's student and teacher login when you go in you'll click student and teacher login um, you're going to click on the side that says students and then play now and then from there you're going to play the teacher playlist i've already put my playlist in the instructions and so you'll just look for my the, the name and then the number and then you just put that in and it'll automatically pull it up um, once you do that, so here's the teacher code. Here's my name. And then there's the number. You'll click next. And you're logging in because, again, you already have an account. I've already put you in here. Um, you're going to log in with Google. And I'm just going to select my son because I've also placed him in the class. You're going to scroll down. These are the playlists that you already have. Uh, this is the scientific method. This is the animal structures and functions that we did last week. And then this is this week's cycles of managing and in transfer, energy transfer and ecosystem. And that's the one that you will click. And then there are three games. Um, there are lessons and their games for you to play. And you guys still compete against each other. May the force be with you. May the strongest warrior win. And then that's it. That is it. So let's do a real quick recap. We're going to do our fab vocab twice. Then we're going to play the match game at least twice. Try to beat Miss Davis' score. I am coming back in getting position number one. Also, we're going to watch the YouTube video, Trophic Level Pyramid. Then we're going to complete the thinking questions in the Google Docs. Um, you just click on it and it'll take you straight to the link. Then we're going to complete the read works. It's a short passage with the energy pyramid already there embedded. And then after that, we're going to go to the games. And there are two games there. One, the first game is to sustain an ecosystem. So you're going to have to have producers that you're going to have to create. You're going to be given points and you have to buy producers and you put them in your valley, your um, ecosystem. Then you're going to need herbivores to eat 
the plants. So then you'll put, add them, buy them with your coins. Then after you have so many herbivores, um, they're going to become overpopulated. So now you're going to have to buy who consumes herbivores. That's right. Um, carnivores or omnivores. So you're going to buy carnivores. And so then you have to play a balancing system because there's so many herbivores and carnivores and producers, something's going to get killed. Something's going to die. So now you need to buy decomposers. And the key is to get as many organisms thriving in your ecosystem, biodiversity, as possible to win the game and to get the highest score. And then the other two games, you'll play those as well. All right. So if you have any questions, you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message on Dojo, send me a message in Google Classroom, or you can email me at tdavis at promiseacademy.com. I love you guys. I miss you guys so much. Um, shout out to Ranisha and Khalees and Dayana. Shout out to Jalen and shout out to Aiden who have been messaging me and asking me questions about assignments. And I see you scholars. I see you learn. All right. Have a wonderful day, promise.